And good morning and welcome to Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in this morning as we do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. We are jumping into fall sports now. We did uh, last week with Shaw Golf. We'll continue on this week with the Madison football. Coach Patrick Morrison. Coach, good morning to you. Thanks for being in this morning. It's very good to see you. Thanks for having us on the show. Uh, no problem. It is. You know, every time we talk, and this is your fifth season as a as a head football coach, but every time we talk, it's like, where where, where did the where did the off season go? <laughs> yeah, where did it go? It flew by. Um, you know, just talking to some of the kids last night, they're seniors and stuff. And they were talking about, you know, one of them in particular. You know, it's hard to believe that you know when you start on Monday. Mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely hard to be, believe. And took our seniors out this past week, and you know, I think they really realized, you know, that. It's it's that time. I right. mean, it's hard to believe that their season's here, and mm -hmm. then you know it's been. It just seems like yesterday that the other season was ending. It doesn't. When you're going through it, it mm -hmm. seems like a long time. But now, when you right. look back, it you know it, it definitely flew by. So. You uh, in your fifth season, and I kind of want to talk a little bit about you as a coach and developing as a coach. I mean, you've had you've had. See, you got off to a, a good start your first season. I, I'd say a good start. You were four and six, six and five the next season. Uh, oh and ten in season three. Last season you ended up two and eight. Kind of talk about your progression as a coach through your first four and just kind of rate yourself as a coach. Well, I think you know we definitely came out strong um, in those first couple of years. Um, you know, definitely excited. You know, things got going in the right direction. Um, but you know, our numbers kind of. You know, have been up and down mm -hmm. um, through that, and we're constantly building those numbers. And I, you know, I feel like this year is going to be real close to being one of our biggest teams that we've had. Um, but you know, rating myself as a coach, um, you know, the first couple of years I had some very strong assistants. Mm -hmm. I still have strong assistants. Sure. Um, but <laughs> I'll be honest, that first year I, don't, <laughs> I was just uh, being organized and running running a program, um, but probably not doing so much coaching. Mm -hmm. um, but in the last couple of years, I've had to, you know, definitely step up the coaching and, you know, look at different ways to keep kids motivated, um, to keep them involved. And you, you talked about that 0 and 10 season. That t that season could have definitely went a different direction had we, you know, got those first three games that we were in. And you know, I talked about that uh, with somebody this past week. Um, you know, what could that season have ended up as if, you know, but, you know once you kind of get in that downhill spiral. Um, and then last year we started, you know, building, building back out of it. And, you know, the big thing I guess I could say over the last four years that I, I'm proud of um, at Madison football and, you know, a lot of people want to see wins, um, but I feel like we've been competitive. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we've given ourselves a chance in the games, um, you know, whether we've taken ourselves out of it mentally or, you know, we've just been outnumbered. You know those reasons, um, but as a coach, I'm always striving to be better. I'm never, you know, satisfied. I had, I had said, you know, two years ago when we had that 0 and 10 season, I promised, you know, the kids that we would never, you know, have another one of those seasons. Um, you know, obviously, I have so much control over doing that, but you know, that, that's that's never my goal to go back um, to that point. Um, and definitely, you know, last year we kind of built ourselves out of that a little bit. Um, moving into this season, and you know, I, I, I realize changes need to be made, um, and we have made some changes over the off season. Um, things that are going to make I think Madison Cubs look a little bit different um, than they've looked in the past. Um, so. Do you, as a coach, and I think I've asked you this before, but I'm going to ask you again. But do you, as a coach, do you change your style based on personnel? Yeah, um, and this uh, newer offense that we're going to is purely based. If you read the job, the job description, if you read the description of the offense and the players that they're looking for for this offense, you'd say sounds like the kids we have in Madison. Right. So, um, I kind of got sold on it back mm -hmm. in um, January. We we're going to a clinic up in Indianapolis, and that was the theme of the clinic. So I went there and I you know, learned about it. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, fell in love with it, and then traveled around the state, talked to some different coaches. Um, so, really engrossed myself in this um, kind of philosophy of offense. Um, I would say because it is kind of a philosophy. You got to mm -hmm. believe it. If you don't, uh, <laughs> then you're just out there doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Um, so, and as doing that, I've talked to people on, you know, how do you keep kids? You know, how do you change up your practice? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you change your practices up? And how do you keep, you know, things kind of hopping and 
So, you know, that's, you know, definitely a, been willing to make a change personnel wise. Yes, I think you got to play to what your kids' strengths are. So. Do you, and kind of taking that a step further with, with your coaching style and philosophies and how big of a challenge is it to take a page and think, I'm going to rip this out of the book and I'm going to paste a new one in for a different style. It's a challenge and it's it's kind of a gamble sometimes. It is. You know, I've always believed though that change happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether what led me to this change or, you know, changes that we deal with on a daily basis, but I believe that, you know, that everything happens for a reason. And it is tough. And you know, I I thought we might have this conversation. <laughs> so, you know, as I'm thinking about in my head, you know, things I'm gonna respond and you know, I thought, you know, yeah, it is tough um, because you know some of those pages that we ripped out of the playbook uh, were things that you know I firmly believed in, or things that you know I ran um, since I was in high school. Um, but you also have to realize that you've got to have something that's going to keep you know kids kind of interested in different kind of you know we're going to be different mm -hmm. okay we're going to be different than everyone else we play and um, stuff that they you know see on tvs they see you know offenses and stuff run on tv so you know that kind of sparks a kind of interest in them so that's the big thing it's all about you know keeping the kids mm -hmm. keeping the kids interested and, you know that's ultimately why i'm here anyways is you know when you know, I constantly reflect on goals and stuff, and I look back at my credentials. You know, when I my little book that I handed in when I applied, and you know, number one reason why I wanted to be here was for the kids. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's my ultimate goal: is yeah. how can I help these kids progress, and then how can I help these kids feel successful, um, and how can I keep these kids interested? Well, and that yet again brings me to my next question: if you're in a if you're in a room full of young men that don't play football. How do you as a coach sell them to play it? Well, I think, you know, football is ultimately a different game than other games because, you know, and I probably have said this every time I've been on the radio, but it takes 11 guys doing something. Um, whereas on a basketball court, you can, one guy could take over a game or a baseball game. You have a star pitcher that, you know, he mm -hmm. does that or, um, so, you know, it's not necessarily an individual sport, it's a team sport. And, mm -hmm. uh, wearing our new shirts this year, today, and you know, it has the word family on it. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I truly believe, is that we have a family type atmosphere. Uh, and nothing nothing against any other coaches or stuff, but you, you listen to our kids kind of talk, and um, one boy, you know, this spring, whenever he was coming out of his winter sport, and he said, you know, man I've missed you guys like when he came back to the weight room he's like how are you guys been? like yeah. it's just those little things that you know I think football develops more of a you know camaraderie a family kind of thing and, you know when we went on our senior trip the other day listening to those guys talk in the back of the bus as we're driving up there and stuff you know, talking about days that you know football just like I said it's just the family type atmosphere and that, that's the big thing I try to sell is that you know and then I tell kids you know maybe it's sound a little conceited but you tell me at the end of the day if you don't like me or not I've not had any kids say hey coach I don't think I'm gonna play this year because I don't like you as a coach yeah you know and, and maybe they just don't say that right for a reason but they've always said you know I really like you coach mm -hmm. but you know football is just not my thing so. yeah and I think as a coach you try to give and this is what I tell my kids that, that I coach. I'm not a I'm not a drill sergeant. We're all in this together, and you're you're going forward together. And I think if if players understand and respect you, that's the kind of response you're going to give. Yeah, um, and that's kind of what I've always tried to give respect. And you know, I talk to the kids about. I feel like they're my little brother. I talk about loving them, which I do. I love every one of the kids that we've had who come through Madison football had Hunter Sego come back yesterday and ask if he could borrow helmet and shoulder pads just so he could go out and condition himself for the upcoming college season. So I think, you know, kids, that makes me feel well that, you know, a kid can contact me out of the blue and say, hey, you know, I feel like I'm doing my job and knowing, letting them know that I am there as more than just a coach. I'm there as a support system for them as a player, there for the, mm -hmm. them as the rest of their lives. Yeah. Coach, you, you get done with your 2-8 and eight season last year. Do you look back and think okay taking out the 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 progression of maybe changing offenses or changing styles but do you look back and say okay this is what we need to do to prepare for the next football season yeah you definitely you kind of look at you know what kind of happened in that last game mm -hmm. um, and james county we always we used to we had didn't do it this year but 
excuse me, but we would have a strength meet and they were, we knew they were a stronger team than us because mm -hmm. it was an individual strength meet. So we knew that they were a stronger team than us. Um, but that first time we played them, they had a lot of guys out injured that mm -hmm. came back um, and that, and they had a pretty strong senior class um, that came back in that game. And that's kind of what they took control of the game um, based off their strength. So we really, um, you know, hit the weight room hard this winter. Um, we started in December, which was the earliest we've ever started in weight room. We went two days a week before Christmas break <clears throat> for all those guys that weren't involved in any type of winter athletes and, you know, our sports, which we, you know, I want kids to play as many sports as possible. That's kind of, you know, in my philosophy as well. Um, but the big thing I think about Madison athletics in general <clears throat> is that last summer we kind of did a complete changeover with our weight room and Jay Roney's been kind of been leading the way on that. Um, you know, we can get more kids in there from his organization of the weight room, but we have so many more sports lifting now. So it doesn't matter that we have kids that are playing other sports because you know they're getting some type of right. lifting in because most teams are lifting throughout their season or have some type of off season programming. So kids that were in baseball, mm -hmm go to baseball it's all right that you go in january and december yep. because i know that they're lifting so um so i think that ultimately we're going to see some of that happen um this fall with you know our strength and you know you look at our maxes and our numbers that we uh, got last week and we were definitely you know we have more kids benching over 225 um i set that kind of as a goal you know i had like 185 200 225 in my head you know guys and then obviously We'll work up to the other numbers, mm -hmm. um, but we have more guys over that number than what we had a year ago. And same thing with the squat and 315. And a lot of these numbers are coming from some of our younger kids who are, you know, sophomores and juniors. Um, so, you know, that, that tells you that it's coming through mm -hmm. from years to come. Right. Um, and, you know, definitely, you know, as a senior, you kind of, I talk about just developing man strength and becoming more of a, mm -hmm. you know, an adult or a man. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the seniors, you, know, you definitely develop that. Plus, I think seniors gain a whole different mentality when they become seniors anyway. So right. um, they can do things that, and push things that they weren't able to do the year before. So, you know, that was the biggest thing from that, you know, they took control of the line of scrimmage. And um, so I'm really excited about moving into this season um, to see where we progressed mm -hmm. from, that, from that point on. Do you, um, is, it a, is it a challenge to get a, a young athlete, whatever, junior high, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, is it a challenge to get them into the weight room to make them understand this is how it makes you better? Uh, when, about, January or February, I'll allow uh, junior high to come over one day a week and lift with us, and then he'll come over one day and do footwork type stuff with us. Just kind of more of an introductory thing, and it's been such a great resource to have Jay Roney in there mm -hmm. um, because he's able to teach lifts. And you know, me, I'm not a certified strength coach by any means. And right. I'm just replicating things that I've done or seen. Sure. And, you know, he breaks things down. Mm -hmm. And he's got these younger guys starting out from a basis, you know, just doing some core exercise where you can see where it kind of, you know, builds off of one another. So that way they're they're realizing I'm doing this so that way I can do that someday. So, right. And I think, you know, that being why, I think that's why we've seen some big growth in our strength of our younger kids mm -hmm. being our sophomores and juniors. Um, because they've had him for a full year where some of the older guys were breaking old habits. Mm -hmm. So they've had to, you know, kind of take a step back mm -hmm. and then rebuild their strength back up. So. Do you, uh, your emphasis on a, on a football player, uh, I want a strong player, I want a talented athletic player, I want a combination of both. I want a hard worker. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's ultimately, you know, I want somebody that's hardworking, that's driven. And we've had a few guys in our program in the past that weren't hardworking guys. I mean, and some of them relied purely on, you know, some their talent or mm -hmm. something. But I think, you know, hard work's always gonna win out. Um, but I do think strength is very important um, to that. But, you know, some people are given abilities, but, you know, are they gonna work as hard mm -hmm. as some of these others? And I talk about, and I always, I think back about myself. I was never, I never had the size, I never had the skill set. I worked hard. Yeah. But I also, the strength didn't develop as quickly as some of the other guys. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I think guys develop things differently just because we're all different individuals and right. stuff. Um, and so you may be working as hard as somebody, but your strength may not come as quick as 
theirs is, mm -hmm. just because we're all developed, you know, differently. But um, but definitely, I want somebody who's going to work hard, and I think everything else will play out in the end the way it's supposed to. You never know what your numbers will be until you get started. Uh, you're going to start Monday. You have an idea of what kind of numbers you're going to have? You know, I was when I did our spring call out and stuff. You know, I had numbers of eighty over 80 which is normal mm -hmm. I, I always get a lot of names and right. guys that throw their hat or throw their name in the hat mm -hmm. and they're interested in playing football this year um, but because as, as the summers kind of windled down and stuff I, I really think we're gonna be close to 65 um, I was hoping for 70 mm -hmm. um, hoping for 70 and 66 is the most that we had had a couple years ago so that's why I you know I, we still may hit 70 mm -hmm. um, but over the summer our numbers have been you know up compared mm -hmm. to what they had you know on a good day working out in the weight room we were probably 25 30 you know the last four years but this year we've been every bit of 40 closer to 50 every single day mm -hmm. so um says a lot about our kids and their commitment to the football program um and we try not to do a whole lot in the summer because right. i understand kids are kids and they want to do stuff and they've got other things going on um so i kind of try to limit it but we did lift three days a week um, for six weeks in the summer so. You give them opportunities, uh, hopefully they can make some of those opportunities happen. Yeah, yeah. It's a, if you give the kids the tools, mm -hmm. just like anybody, you give them the tools and give them the opportunities, it's fully up to them to take you know advantage of them. And they're going to be the ones truly reaping the benefits. Right. I'm just, I, you know, I tell them all the time that you know I'm at the, the top of the pyramid, you know, per se, but I have a very small role if you look mm -hmm. at you know how a pyramid's built. I just yeah. have that little thing. I'm just giving the guidance. You guys are the base of the program. You guys are the ones who are going to actually make it happen. So it's all about, you know, like I said, it's all about the kids. Sure. It's all about helping them be successful. Um, and they're going to be the ones reaping the benefits at the end of the day. Against a different opponent, no Charlestown this year. We're looking at Crawford County. Yeah, it's a change. <laughs> I, mean, I forget what it said, you know, in the paper a couple years ago when Dave Campbell had written that story about, you know, Madison football hadn't seen a change in their schedule and I think it was 18 years at that time so mm -hmm. we're probably close to you know 19 or 20 I believe but you know we're a different opener um, yeah. Charlestown was kind of forced to to leave you know the thing I, I don't know if they you know were excited about leaving or not but they're right. kind of forced to leave um, because of Scottsburg adding into their conference so which with Scottsburg adding into their conference Scottsburg is also into our sectional this year so right. you know not only we have seen a, a change at the beginning of the season we're also seeing a change mm -hmm. um, in our sectional as well so I'm excited um, you know I like I said I think you know as I mentioned earlier I think change happens for a reason right uh, we get to we're playing at home this year so we kind of flip-flopped our you know was five games you know home schedule last year and right. this year would have technically been four um, but now we're you know back-to-back -back years and having five home games Crawford County, in case you didn't know, is a 2A team, and again, they'll come into a cup field on Friday night, August the 18th. Now, the rest of the schedule remains the same. Yeah, so <laughs> a little bit of change, um, right. and I think as the years change, and you know, a lot of people probably read in the newspaper, but you know, 2019 there will be, you know, some more changes coming, and mm -hmm. we'll add another non-conference game in week six, and yeah. who that is yet has yet to be determined, but. Yeah. Uh, I know our athletic department is working to you know, find that void. So it's a and the schedule is is for those that may not know it's it's kind of a, a whole different outlook outcome out. It's a, it's a challenge and, and, and a lot of different ways for for athletic directors and for coaches to try to put together the perfect schedule and really there is one there isn't one no there isn't it's not like it you know every year it comes with a nice little bow on top and says you know here's your schedule yeah um you know it's it's exciting to uh, have some change to it um obviously like you know i said you know a new version of the cubs obviously yeah. there's some changes obviously the offense there's gonna be changes on defense you know changed up the logo on the helmet mm -hmm. you know um and obviously there's plenty of changes within the school corporation and stuff yeah. but you know changes in the season so uh, just you know new outlook on things and you know going forward and like I said I think that you know everything's falling in place the way that it's meant to fall in place and you know excited about getting it going so speaking of changes though I don't I don't you know we're losing the real MVP this year but Dave Campbell the sport tracker so yeah um, you know that that's one of those changes that you know you talk about positive changes sure. and negative changes right definitely going to be somebody obviously you know enjoy talking to you and him at the end of the end of the games you guys make it easy win or lose you know yeah. you're questioning and stuff but uh definitely gonna 
miss working with Dave this kind of season. So. It, uh, yeah, it definitely, and, and one of the things that folks may not know is Dave and I actually started the same year. He started at the Courier, I started at the radio station, and our first event to cover was the Fall 98 Madison Regatta. We started at the same event. It kind of worked that way. It was kind of <laughs> funny. So, yeah, I'm going to miss him, and again, when we we tag team a whole lot of interviews back, way back, and uh, you know it's it's been a lot of fun. But yeah, he does a great job, and we wish you, wish him the best of luck, Coach. Let's let's talk uh, Hoosier Hills Conference. You know, when you talk HHC, first name comes to mind is Columbus East. Yeah, uh, they're definitely a powerhouse. They're a program that a lot of teams are striving to be like. You know, mm -hmm. you talk to any coach in the conference or any coach in Southern Indiana, and they, you know, we want to we want to do what Columbus East is doing. So you know. We want to be like Columbus East, and you know, Coach Gaddis up there has had tremendous success, and I have all the respect for him in the world. He's definitely a very humble guy, mm -hmm. uh, a guy that you know, you send him an email, he responds very quickly. Sure. You know, he, he's there to be a resource to others and help others, and you know, do whatever he can. Um, he's, you know, he's he's a great guy, and you know, great guy that got a great football program going sure. in the right direction. Sure. And you look at Columbus East and the success they've had in. The numbers they have is kind of unbelievable sometimes when you look at how many players that they suit up for a game, and that's not all of them either. No, yeah, they uh, they, they probably don't dress too many freshmen on a Friday <laughs> night, um, but they've got you know close to 80 guys on their on their sidelines and stuff. So um, definitely a great program. They got a great facility up there, um, you know. But you know, how can we take those next steps to get Madison football program? On a level that they're on, and you know, we're constantly working towards that every day. As I told our middle schoolers the other day when I stopped by uh, their conditioning practice, and you know, I said, "We're all in this together. Mm -hmm. We're all moving in the same direction." So then, that's the, that's the big thing, and bringing that whole family thing into it. That we're all working towards one common goal. So. Do you how how involved are you with the, the middle school? Well, obviously, I teach in the middle school, so I am. Um, I see those kids on a daily basis. Uh, which I think is very important because that way they're getting to see my face and I'm, uh, you know, recruiting them for the high school. Um, but you know, our, our junior high coaches are great and they have been great over the last couple of years about doing what we want ever since I've been here. You know, yeah. so this is year five, but you know, they've done a great job of implementing our offense and our defense. You know, they have small little tweaks because right. you know they, everything can't be the exact same. Right. But um, but they've done a great job of doing that. And, uh, you know, over there this year we have Kent Mahoney and Shannon Gackier, you know, leading that program. Um, so, you know, they're developing kids for us at the high school, and there's, mm -hmm. you know, definitely some talent in that group over there. Um, I'm excited about having them over here at the high school someday. You, you, you talk about the junior high and kids being involved, and in order for them to be excited when they get to you, they got to be excited in the junior high program. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, you know, I, I, with Shannon Gacky, this is his first year helping out the high school. And, you know, I'm telling, extri describing him Kent Mahoney. I'm like, Kent Mahoney is a, a ball of positive energy. He's, you know, I was over there the other day. He's, just, you know, he's constantly preaching and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think, you know, I think those two are working great over there, um, developing kids that are learning to love the game of football, but also learning to play it the right way. So. We're going to talk sectional now, Coach. We wrap up our, our final segment here, sectional 23 for the Cubs. A little bit, as you mentioned, a little bit different look for Madison this year. Uh, yeah, um, obviously I think East Central is probably one of the favorites in that sectional, followed closely by Franklin County. Um, but I also think we're one of the favorites, too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like definitely, I felt like we've been a contender every year in this sectional. Um, it's just, you know, we've not gotten things going at the right point moment I feel like it's built for us to you know have some success and mm -hmm. in my five year kind of goal thing and we've not hit it yet was right. to compete for a sectional championship. Mm -hmm. Well when I turned in my five year goal when I interviewed well yeah. this is year five so yeah. you know that's definitely our goal is to compete for a sectional championship this year. Um, but a couple two new teams in there um, is Scottsburg um, who's starting their first year full varsity and then Edgewood um, which I think Edgewood's over near Bloomington area. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not real familiar with mm -hmm. um, them, but you know those two new schools have came into our sectional. Uh, Seymour moved up. Um, they're 5A now, so they moved out, and then Shelbyville moved to the sectional to the north of mm -hmm. us with Greenwood. So. so it's a little bit different look and a, a little bit different um I mean, I guess it's kind of like a, when you change the offense, it's a little bit more of a renewed 
feeling because you you could see some teams you don't normally see. Yeah, and it's kind of a, you know exciting, preparing for something different, looking mm -hmm. at things different. I mean, it just adds a whole different you know new take on it. Um, definitely gives it a little bit more excitement. Um, so, which is you know which is going to be fun. Um, like I said, you know, I feel like you know those teams in there that we can compete with any of them. So, and you know that's what our goal is this year to you know play in a sectional championship game. You mentioned your five-year plan. This is year five. Talk about what the plan is. <laughs> well, you know, when I came in, you know, I, I set certain goals. Sure. And, you know, most of those we've hit, um, except for playing a sectional championship. Mm -hmm. You know, one of them was, you know, the number one is, is build a, you know, a football program that's positive in the mm -hmm. eye of the community, uh, which, you know, I feel like we've done that. Mm -hmm. um, you know the sponsors on the back of my name and my shirt. You know mm -hmm. it's it's you know these are people who just generously give now, and you know have to kind of talk them into it. So I'm very thankful for all of our sponsors uh, throughout the football or throughout the community mm -hmm. who take care of that. And you know we have kids. You know just last night I had four guys over helping. Uh, the FOP had a race at the golf course. Um, uh, Five K or three K, <laughs> but they had a race over there, and the yeah. boys were helping. And they they're asking, they're like, "Is football players coming back again this year?" Because right. they know the kind of mm -hmm. the quality kids are going to get. Um, you know, developing a youth program mm -hmm. um, or a youth camp, which we've done, and we you know, had that. And you know, our kids love working. You know, high school kids love working youth program. Keep developing our junior high, and you know, all those you know programmable things. Mm -hmm. um, one that we just you know and help push kids to college sure and I, I, I think we've done that and giving kids the opportunity to know that they can go on and play at the next level um, so whether it be football or any type of sport you mm -hmm. know that's that's the big thing or even just getting them into college that's the you know that's the big thing that you know so that's you know those those goals and then you know, compete for that sectional championships that one kind of goal that we haven't we haven't touched mm -hmm. um, and I think this is the, you know, obviously if I want to complete all my goals within the five year, <laughs> we've yeah. got to get it done this year, but, um, but definitely something that we're constantly striving for. So. Sectional championship game is easier said than done sometimes. Yeah. So. Uh, you look, Coach, and, and at, this, at the team you, you, you've got upcoming, and again with practice starting on Monday, you still have a general idea of what you're looking at. You've done some things over the summer. Uh, kind of a uh, something that strikes you as what you like seeing this team come in on Monday. You know, I, I definitely the camaraderie uh, between the guys and you know the pushing and just that family atmosphere type thing. And I think it really kind of hit home when we're driving that senior outing on Wednesday and mm -hmm. listening to those guys talk and their excitement and stuff about the upcoming season. Um, but yeah, Monday we kick it off. Uh, a little bit different, you know, like a change. Uh, yeah. You know, be our first year. We're gonna have a two a day because mm -hmm. school starts late enough in the week, and we don't have teacher days. That Monday, the kids will show up at 8 a.m. over at the locker room. Uh, we'll have a brief meeting where I kind of go through the normal kind of expectations of players and stuff like that. Um, then we'll go out on the field from 8:30 to 10. We'll come in. We're gonna get cleaned up. Um, get our height and weight taken care of. Normally, something we have to do after practice to sure. keep kids late. Um, and then we have. Um, Joe and Michelle Neer have been really helpful in uh, the River Valley Community Church, and they're going to sponsor a lunch for the football program. And we have a uh, former Division One athlete, Zeke Pike, uh -huh. who's going to come in. Um, he's had some struggles throughout his life. Um, he played football at three Division One programs. Um, he's going to kind of share his story. Oh, wow. um, I've heard him speak, and it's mm -hmm. it's very moving. Yeah, and I think the kids are really in for a, a great treat uh, with that, and then. Freshmen have to take their impact testing. We'll get that done in the afternoon. Finish passing out the rest of the equipment, um, and then we'll go back out 3:30 to 5. Mm -hmm. So, um, full day full of football, sure. um, but a different way of you know starting the season out. Right. Um, but the big thing is we're all going to be there together. So, yeah. um, definitely going to be looking forward to that part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of get into normal swing in the afternoon. And th school starts on Thursday. And yeah. Uh, we'll practice after school, and then Friday we have our you know annual red light scrimmage, which mm -hmm. is always a good time. Sure. More or less, it's a practice, right. but it's exciting to get right. out on the game field for the first time this season. And then the following week, you have your scrimmage with Salem. Salem, mm -hmm. and that's here. Mm -hmm. um, and then the following week after that, we're at home in Crawford County. So yeah. we're we're in the county for the next three weeks, and you know, we're looking forward to it. Um, definitely exciting time of the year. Um, Especially for anybody who's a football fan, because yep. football starts being on TV again. Yep. Um, you know, guys are practicing and stuff like that. It's just yeah. for all those guys like me who 
you know their their thing in life is that they love football sure. it's, you know it, it's it's coming around and um, definitely you know looking forward to this season and looking forward to how it plays out and um, want to wish all of our fall sports and you know all the athletics throughout the whole entire school you know good luck through mm-hmm. this through this year as we embark on this you know the 2017 2018 school year Going to be a fun one indeed. We're looking forward to coverage as well on Friday nights. Again, beginning on August the 18th uh, as Madison hosts Crawford County. We'll be there every Friday night for Cup Football Coach. It's always a pleasure. We've done it now five years in a row. Yeah, five years. <laughs> Appreciate you coming in this morning. Thank you very much. All right, that's Coach Patrick Morrison, Madison Football Coach. Again, uh, Cubs open up August 18th with Crawford County at home. Of course, our pregame at 640. We're there every Friday night for Cup Football. That's going to do it this week for Coach's Corner. For my engineer in studio, A.J. Bramer, and everyone here, of course, Kentuckian News recording. We'll have this uh, posted online coming up uh, tomorrow. So uh, you can watch this program and see Coach Patrick Morrison on video. <laughs> He's got a face for video, so uh, be sure to watch it. That's going to do it for Coach's Corner. See you next time here on Works 96.7. the gap. Executive producers Debbie Crawford of Kentuckiana News and Tim Torrance of WORX Radio. Presented by McDonald's of Madison and Chandler Chevrolet, the savings place.